Innovating Education Learning World in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation. In many countries, education aims to produce skilled workers capable of tackling local challenges. What's the point in producing historical researchers, for example, when a country is struggling to grow enough food? So educational programs are manipulated in order to produce qualified people who can help solve national problems. This week on Learning World, we look at how this shapes up on the ground. The Galapagos Islands are famous for their marine biodiversity and have, of course, their connection to Charles Darwin. The islands were removed from the UN Heritage Committee's list of endangered sites in 2010, in part due to projects training young people in conservation, environmental issues and ecology. A thousand kilometers from Ecuador, the Galapagos Islands still remain the remote and uncontaminated paradise studied by Charles Darwin in 1835 during the voyage of the Beagle. If in the past the Galapagos contributed to the inception of Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection, today they inspire a new way of education. Orena Oleas is a member of the Scalizia Foundation formed 21 years ago by concerned parents to provide an educational alternative for their children. The result is Thomas de Belanga School on Santa Cruz Island. It sounds very romantic to say one lives in Galapagos because it's a national park, a place where 97% of the area is a national park, where there's only 3% for people to live. You can imagine there are many restrictions. Restrictions that in a remote and isolated place like the Galapagos can generate frustration and violence amongst the 20,000 people living there. That's why one of the pillars of Thomas de Belanga School is teaching conflict resolution. Every day, students learn how to manage conflicts and to live in peace with each other on these small islands. Hugging each other allows them to feel more integrated and more confident. Since we have many new kids and others came here from other schools, this really helps them to better socialize and to be better friends. Resolving conflicts is just one step of the education process to become, in the future, a good Galapagos leader. Someone able to respect and protect these islands, a priority for the school. We're educating Galapagos leaders, which means people responsible for the environment where they live, who respect each other and respect each other's differences. Like many of the 200 students here, Emily's not from the Galapagos. She's from Scotland, but dreams of being a future leader here. I would try harder to, to, um, to preserve the, these islands, these beautiful islands, and they're very unique, you know. Preserving the Galapagos Islands and their primal DNA with their mix of competition and perfect harmony, this is the most important lesson at Thomas de Belanga School. From the Pacific Ocean, we now head to Burkina Faso in Africa, one of the world's poorest countries. Agriculture is the main source of income for most people, but less than a quarter of the land is farmed. We look at one project which is teaching agricultural techniques alongside other practical skills like carpentry and sewing. Let's take a look. Dedugu is a medium-sized town in the Sahel region of Africa in Burkina Faso. 80% of the inhabitants are farmers. Their livelihood depends on rainfall. The problem in this semi-arid region is that it only rains on average four months a year. So how do you survive the entire 12 months? You adapt. People must find other work to get through the year. And education must adapt as well to prepare young people to survive in this difficult climate. Solomon's team will go to the cornfield. This team, the second, will go to the gardens. The third team heads to the beanfield and the fourth will start with the cleaning. The young gardeners or Jean Jardinier de Dedugu is a school adapting to regional conditions, a process funded by the Follero Foundation of Luxembourg. The school teaches agricultural methods to get the most from this arid land. The curriculum's a combination of practical farming techniques, the learning of secondary skill, and the primary skills of reading and writing. 
Pour apprendre le métier, il faut quand même savoir lire et écrire. In order to learn a profession, you still have to know how to read and write. That's why we are here to help them to learn to write and express themselves so they can succeed later. There are many advantages because in the other schools they only learn general subjects. There is no training, no practical activities or production. If they fail there, they're left with nothing. But here, if they aren't good in class, they at least learn a profession. They have carpentry, sewing, farming and livestock. There's everything. The program lasts three years and requires a certain discipline to get through. Adapting education to local needs also helps keep young people from seeking work in already overcrowded cities or from roaming the streets after failing in the more academic education system. Upon graduation, the students receive 50,000 francs, a little over 75 euros, to get started in their new careers. Eric Manor used the money to buy a sewing machine and started his own business, avoiding an otherwise uncertain future. I lived in the town before and I can tell you I was a real bandit. People said I was good for nothing. Since the school opened in 1980, 300 young gardeners have graduated and begun their careers better able to adapt to harsh local conditions. Going back to the Pacific Ocean, now we visit Kiribati, a tiny island nation where climate change is a major preoccupation. Here, UNICEF has been providing lessons so that people are better informed and have a variety of ways of tackling it. Let's see how in this report. Kiribati is one of the world's most vulnerable countries, spread over 33 low-lying atolls in the central and western Pacific region. Its people are experiencing a disaster that's slowly and steadily eroding their culture and home. Their low-lying atolls are pounded day and night by rising sea levels which infiltrate scarce supplies of fresh water and the limited patches of fertile land. She also destroyed that. One, of the, one of our neighbor's house. Not only that, but some houses near the seawall. Climate change was predicted long ago here. Its impact is already frightening and real. That's why UNICEF, with the support of the European Union's financing an adaptation program for vulnerable communities, it concentrates on improving adaptive capacity, better management, conservation, restoration and a sustainable use of biodiversity. UNICEF provides the island's young people with video and new media so they can share their stories around the world. I learned how to convey message through using Facebook and to show to other people what is exactly being experienced by people in Kiribati. Young people in Kiribati have produced more than 100 videos taking their local experience global. The videos are now available online on the UNICEF Pacific YouTube channel. The president of Kiribati is on the front line. He stresses the important role of education in building consciousness in the future generations. I think it's absolutely essential that uh, we do give a lot of attention to the, uh, the, the role of the children in, this, um, in the whole process. Um, it is, after all, about the future that we're talking about. <laughs> Our young people are perhaps one of the happiest in the planet, and uh, I think that's something that we should be very proud of. And I think it's uh, such a pity that they are enjoying life here, but they, without their knowledge, it's actually being destroyed from somewhere else. Well, that's all we have time for now. We look forward to hearing your feedback on our social media pages. And don't forget, our Twitter hashtag is LearnWorld. So stay in touch. Goodbye from all the team. Learning World, in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation.